Ready? Sag after. Sag after. Crossing the picket line. Crossing the picket line. Crossing the picket line. W A G. W A G. Coming Alec to you. Alec Baldwin balding in a window. Alec, Alec Baldwin balding Bald- Bald- in a window. Window, window to the wall. So it's Barbenheimer week. And, uh, so not our Barbenheimer episode. Not our Barbenheimer episode. Which will be our next which episode. Next one. And um, you, know, you and I are going to see Oppenheimer on Sunday. Oh, can't Very wait, excited. Can't wait. Found the best screen, mm-hmm. projected IMAX film. Mm-hmm. Cannot wait. Yeah. And um, I had my sisters text me this week, do you want to go and see Barbie? And I was like, yep, yeah, sure. Look for like a Friday night screening. All sold out. <gasps> Very good science for Barbie. So I was like, what if we do a Saturday day? All good. What if we get mum and dad involved? Yep, all good. So I call up mum and I'm like, mum, and the, my view is my local, my local cinema where it's most convenient for us all to go see it. I go, mum, do you want to go and see Barbie at The View with me and Katie and Natasha? And she goes, yes, yes, we'd love to, we'd love to. And I was like, okay, am I booking for five? Is dad coming? And she goes, yeah. And she goes, Alan, do you want to go and see Barbie at The View? And he goes, Who's barbecue? And she goes, no, do you want to see Barbie at The View? And he goes, who's barbecue? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm there just on speaker with my phone, yeah. just waiting for this. But anyway, <laughs> waiting for this boom, boomer <laughs> conversation to, to end. <laughs> that happened like three times. She was like, I can't hear you. Who's barbecue is it? <laughs> but, and they are going, going to go. Yeah, yeah, we're all going to go as a family to see Barbie. Nice. But speaking of Barbenheimer, Alex writes into the show and says, Dear James and George, hope you're well. Oh, we're beginning listening. with an email Beginning today. with an email, yeah, yeah, yeah. Writes into hello at popkitchenpodcast.com just like you can and says, Dear James and George, hope you're well. Thank you. I started listening to the pod a couple of months ago when I started my new job. My old one was a couple of minutes from my house, so I never got time to listen to anything. Mm. Now I have a job that is 30 minutes away. I thought I would hate the commute, but your guys' podcast has got me through it, and now I actually really enjoy the journey. Guess I never is. used to listen to podcasts, and I still don't really. I have no doubt that Pop Kitchen will be top of my Spotify rap this year, considering it's the only podcast I listen to. I hope you feel honoured, boys. I do feel quite honoured with that, actually. Yeah, it's, you know what? There's something about, like, wanting a bit of a commute yes you can lose something when you don't have that yes. time as much as we do try and shorten it sometimes you're like i actually just want to move with yeah. some my own media i need loading time yes. before i get to my office yes anyway enough about me here's my question are you guys going to watch both barbie and oppenheimer on the same day it seems half the world is clearing their schedules to watch both films back to back i have myself booked the day off work to go and see them both brackets don't tell my boss <laughs> also if you're watching them back to back which one are you going to watch first? Me and my friend have also decided to do Barbie in the afternoon dressed in pink, then dinner and drinks. And then we're changing into darker clothes for Oppenheimer. Mm. I know we're pretty committed. <laughs> I can't wait to, the, to experience the completely opposite styles of Gerlich and, uh, Gerlich, Gerwig and Nolan back to back. Mm. Thanks for making my drive to work enjoyable. I hope to write in again. Can I now be considered a friend of the pod? Best wishes, Alex from Northern Ireland. Sure, you can be a friend of the pod. We're you all are, friends. Everyone's a friend of the pod. You are a friend. Don't crash your car. The Barbenheimer phenomenon, George, as Is, far as I can remember is unlike anything I've ever seen. I love it. Massive count, ma- two massive films, both yeah. very much uh, thematically counter-programming to each other. Yes. But instead of there being this like, oh, you want to see that one, yeah. not that one, everyone's like, cannot wait to see both this weekend. They compliment and typically, there's this sort of old school idea of releases where like people aren't going to go to the cinema twice in one weekend. Mm. They're only going to go once. So you need to make sure you're competing against yeah. something that's not going to be their decision. Yeah. But everyone is like, I'll happily go twice. I'll go twice in one day. Yeah. And everyone anecdotally I've spoken to, people who are really into film and yeah. people who are not, are all on board with it. Yeah, I love I loved the idea. I love I love that this is, a, a, you know, in a time when we were, t- especially when we were talking about last week, yes. when it's like, oh, where's film culture? Where's film conversation now? It's like, well, isn't it great that people, the internet has set alight this debate of like, let's yeah. let's have this, let's have fun with this. And also like the idea of like certain bigger films, please uh, listen to our bonus episode we did about whether or not cinema is dying. We didn't have an Answer, but we certainly you know no. covered a lot of the elements in play um you know people saying that all oh, this big film that costs a lot of money didn't make money yeah. and it's like yeah well did people want to see it really in the first place yes and instead of like saying the whole industry's dying yeah. are we actually just becoming very streamlined and specialized with what we actually exactly. want and it's just a huge coincidence that these two happen to be coming out and everyone's down well, for exactly it. instead of having you know uh, carbon copy copy and paste Marvel films and yeah. and, we, and that used to be a, like a, a cliche, but we can actually say that because we got things like Quantumania, which yes. we literally were that. You have two films made by independent, uh, you know, established uh, 
auteur directors yes. who have a distinctive voice making v- films in their own style, in their own way Not about sequels. iconic 20th century characters yeah. with a star-studded cast um, that, you know, promise to be nothing that we expect. Yeah. Um, I think it's great. Just on that though, mm. phenomenon aside, as much as, as I love the phenomenon, I'm all on board for it, it's great. Yeah. I won't be watching it on the same day. No, me neither. And as you just said, you won't <laughs> yeah. be either. For the, for the reason that, look, I turn up to Oppenheimer just in full pink, like <laughs> yeah. ready for my day. Well, look, Oppenheimer, that was, uh, there was more of a race to book Oppenheimer because it's speci- we want to specifically see that in IMAX, yeah. right? And that was the race to do that. So we did that, we locked it in on a midday on a Sunday, yeah. right? The thing is, I know looking at Oppenheimer, and especially since we spoke to someone the other day who's seen it, that it's going to be big. Yeah. And I don't want to suppress, uh, crush, force feed uh, Oppenheimer mm. with a Barbie chaser. I want yeah. to be able to ingest three hours of Oppenheimer, which I've heard is very heavy and very intense. It's like which... having two very conflicting flavors. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's like or, having, or having your jelly and ice cream. immediately. Yes. Yeah. You and want then just... having like an, an aubergine no. curry. Yeah, <laughs> no, not... no, thank you. I want to have my Oppenheimer and then for the rest of that day, I want to sit with Oppenheimer in my mind. Yeah. And then I wake up the next day and I'm going to go and see Barbie in the evening by the time Oppenheimer's okay. receded. And I think that, to be honest, is fair to both films. Yeah. It's fair to Barbie. It's not fair to go and see Barbie if you're still like shuddering <laughs> coming out of the mushroom cloud of Oppenheimer. <laughs> your goggles yeah. have like left an imprint from the nuclear <laughs> yeah. bomb and your hair is... Nor is it fair to turn up to Oppenheimer full pink being yeah. like, whoa, let's do this. Let's detonate. We've redefined what a modern woman means yeah. and we did it through this previously slightly reductive lens yeah. of, of fe- female so, Barbie. So I, I think that's fine because I'm still intending to see both films yeah. that weekend. That answers your question. Neither of us are seeing it in the same neither day. Neither of us are seeing like, it on the same day. We're here for it. Absolutely. Love that it's sort of the big weekend yeah. that's going on. And then also there is the drama, which we talked about very briefly out, off the podcast, which was the whole uh, Nolan and Warner Brothers broke up. Oh, yeah. Right. They fell out over releasing Tenet day and day on their streaming service. And Nolan was like, absolutely not. You don't do that. He was like, yeah. I'll never you know, work with you ever again, switches to Universal, who he's now done Oppenheimer with. And like Nolan, mid-July, every three years, that's his date. Yeah. He brings out a film like the, the middle week of July and Warner Brothers know this, but they then chose to release Barbie because yeah. it's counter-programming on the same day. So there, it, like, it could have been this like otherwise quite yeah. toxic battle, but actually like everyone wins. I mean, look, I don't know. Maybe they both bomb. I don't well, think no, they but, will. Uh, but like... <laughs> As I said, I tried to book on Friday night and like it was completely burnt. But also, it's what goes... It's, you have to look at what Tom Cruise was trying to do mm. with his Instagram post where he had shown his ticket stubs for Barbie Oppenheimer yeah, and yeah, Indiana really Jones. celebrating And his me. point is valid, which is, this is it's bigger than going to see one film over the other. The point is, is that cinema is a place to go this, this month, this yeah. summer. Look at all the great films you can see. And I'm like, in a weird way, like Tom Cruise, Christopher Nolan... Martin Scorsese uh, and maybe, I don't know, Quentin Tarantino are all talking about the industry and like the future of cinema in very different ways, but they're all very passionate yeah. about, about it. Um, you know, all, each, each person now I associate, specific, as especially Cruz, Nolan and Scorsese, always talking about what the future of cinema mm. is. They get asked a lot in little junkets and everything. And it's great that an actor, you know, no, most of the, you know, the other ones are directors that, that can do that. Um, did you see that I think someone asked Nolan... Are you going to do a Tarantino or a Scorsese? Are you going to retire and leave a and leave a nice solid legacy and retire early, like Tarantino's going to do, mm. or are you going to do what Scorsese is and just chase films to the very end, keep making films into your old age, keep refining cinema? And, and he said he sees the merits in both. He loved to leave a clean legacy and leave 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 a nice filmography behind, but then also he does he just thinks that he you know if, if there's a game to be played. And you got to keep playing it, and there's a, there's a I can fight imagine you just had. becoming occupied by an idea and just manically scribbling on a, on a board, yeah. and the arrows like loop back to the start. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't it be amazing if Nolan like not amazing, but like I can see him like going away for twenty years yeah. and then coming back with this just a, in, a film that just yeah insane. a premise like Inception caliber of yeah you've not thought of this yeah, yeah absolutely of course I yeah. so he seems to be doing this um, since Interstellar he seems to yo-yo between big sci-fi idea. Historic uh, retelling of a historical thing. So he did Instellar, uh-huh. Dunkirk, yep. goes over to like big sci-fi idea in yeah. Tenet, coming back, back to, to like sci-fi. retelling a, yeah. a historical moment. 
I wonder if after this he will go back to telling a big future side. Yeah, like a palate cleanser each yeah, time. Yeah, he sort of the he clearly loves his history. Yeah, I've just noticed that's a bit of a pattern that's forming. Just on one thing on Barbie, last thing on Barbie and Oppenheimer. I am glad that you and I are seeing it in different orders. So you're seeing True. Barbie yeah. the day before, I'm seeing Saturday day, and yeah. I'm seeing Oppenheimer first. Yes. So you're that way, Barbie Monday night. In a way, it's not like we're treating Barbie as seconds. No, no, purely based on the circumstances and mm. seeing it for the show really for we but record. that's next week's next episode, episode and you can stay tuned for that but today we're talking about other films that are out <laughs> other films <laughs> those episodes that are all the, the big films. films yeah ones that you can find on streaming <laughs> yeah. james what are we talking about this week <laughs> they clone tyrone and a what's new that? film starring john boyega jamie fox and tayona paris harris paris i think it's paris paris um we're also gonna be talking about wham with an exclamation mark, yeah. because uh, 90 minute pop uh, duo documentary that's also on Netflix uh, and a nice bit of counter programming to your, what looks like a science fiction type of film. Is it? Sure. They clone Tyrone? Yeah, kind of. Sounds science fiction. It's a little bit. Steampunky. Not quite. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then in our bonus episode, we're going to be covering the SAG after a situation. We're aware we're recording this on Monday the 17th yes. and this bonus will come out on the Friday. But just based on some news recently, big stress covering. We're going to be just talking about what we know, how it might affect us going forward. So stay tuned for that. On with the reviews. Yeah. I saw a. Um, you know, I've got two West Highland. My parents have two West Highland white dogs. What, what, uh, no, they're small white ones. You know the type, Westies. I think so. Yeah. Right. Do you need me to show you a picture to clarify? I think I know what you mean, yeah. Anyway, I saw one today walk past me and it looked like a nice young one. I was like, oh, that reminds me of my dogs. So I said to the guy, I kind of waved. I always try and get the dog's attention first to see if it's a friendly dog. And the dog caught my eye. I was like, oh. and I was like, oh, I said to the guy, I was like, oh, do you mind if I said it to the dog? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I, and I went over to this dog and I, it's like the dog knew that I was a Westie guy. Yeah. It's like the dog knew that I knew Westies because the dog looked at me and was Probably. like, <laughs> Yeah. And this wasn't like an overly, match. this dog wasn't Dogs, no. manic before that. And I, it just like, it knew the way I would cuddle it, yeah. and, it, and, it and it reciprocated. And we had this lovely moment and it mm. knew that I knew Westies. I believe And that. I told it that and it, it went, well, you know, yeah. we cuddled. And it was, it was a nice moment. And the guy was like, wow, this guy's really enjoying it. And I was like, like, I have a Westie. <laughs> yeah. And I was, oh, you know, really getting into it. And then yeah. I was like, I'm going to let this stranger get on with his day now. Yeah. This horrible man who's touched my dog in every way it knows. I yeah. then did, I had just ordered a falafel wrap and I was like, how can I eat this now with my dog hands? <laughs> oh, no wonder the dog was all like, <laughs> 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 yeah, I had all these sausages in my pocket. No wonder why I loved me so much. Anyway, dogs aside, we've got a film to discuss. They Clone Tyrone, George, a film that I initially was drawn to when we did our cover of the year of what was going to come out this year. Yes. I looked at the cast and I saw John Boyega, yes. who I think is always great. Mm -hmm. And I saw Jamie Foxx, great. who I think is not only great, but could do anything. You could put him anywhere mm -hmm. and I think he'd be great. He could be funny, he could be serious, yeah. And I thought it looks like an interesting premise. It looked very interestingly shot. Uh, Netflix very kindly gave us some early access mm -hmm. to review it before it came out. Uh, by the time you listen to it, this, it will be out. Um, they clone Tyrone. It's set in uh, the Glen in the US, which I think is a real place, but I'm not sure. And it sort of takes place in a moment in time, but it doesn't commit to a timepiece. Like there's loads of sartorial references to the 70s, hair from the 80s, mm -hmm. yet there's like references to crypto and Bitcoin. Okay. But then there's like a really old flip phone, but then there's sort of this like lab of sci-fi in the yeah. future. So sort of reference it lifted from the last 50 years of culture put yeah. in here and this sort of central uh, byline of the film is that you have a drug dealer a pimp and a sex worker walk into a lab and that's like the joke okay. like, what happens and that's sort of what this is uh John Boyega plays... Sorry, like one of those famous setups where people walk into labs. I've yeah. never heard of a joke well, that was like where the... someone walks into a lab. What do you mean? <laughs> well, it's like someone walked into a bar. No, I, I, thank you. I yeah. got that. Anyway. Um, so we have John Boyega, who is uh, Tyrone Fontaine, uh, is out, you know, running through the neighborhood, collecting money he's owed for drugs. And he busts into Jamie Foxx, who plays Slick, who is a pimp and also uh, in relation to a, a sex worker called Yo-Yo, uh, who's called Yo-Yo because mm. she always comes back. Oh, right. Like, you know, when she shouts and screams, I'm done with you. And, like, she always comes yeah. back, right? Yeah. Um, really one night, imaginative. Uh, 
to uh, Fontaine is you know sirens, he's on dealt sirens on our end, very loud sirens on our end. Speeding chase. It sounds like chase. Uh, is collecting some money, and as he leaves, he sits in his car. Uh, Jamie Foxx, which witnesses him get shot down dead, bullets through through himself. And then the next day, uh, who turns up but Fontaine? And he says, "What are you doing here? I saw you. I saw you die. What are you talking about?" And he's like, "I didn't die." So there's been this whole they you know they all decide to get together and follow this mystery and uncover the footsteps. They find their way down into an underground lab. Right. Where who do they see the body of? They cloned Tyrone. Tyrone. They see a clone of himself with bullet holes. It's the version of himself that was there. Hang on, but you said Fontaine got shot. Uh, Tyrone Fontaine is the. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and so they're all like, oh my God, this is this whole conspiracy. And what they're realizing is that certain elements of black culture, be it in the hair products that are used, the clothes that they mm. wear, the food that they eat, and like the, like the fried chicken and the grape soda, everything being worn in this like big purple neon light, the church, the way that they sing, uh, it is all being subtly controlled by a larger entity for some reasons. And look, I think at the, at the core of it, what I really liked is a great cast. John Boyega, fantastic. Yeah. Continues to just uh, continually evolve. And I think he's always, he always seems to be improving from my perspective. Jamie Foxx, really funny. I think the three of them with Tony Paris just have very good chemistry and I enjoyed watching it. The premise, which I've now described to you of um, sort of modern day slavery not existing, but actually being very apparent in a lot more subtle ways mm -hmm. where black culture and uh, the idea of imprisonment and control being subtly interwoven yeah. into many aspects of society is a cool idea I've seen better explored yeah. in a lot of other, let's be honest, Jordan Peele films. Mm. So I did feel like for a lot of the film, I'm really indulging it mm. and I'd sort of letting it sort of unfurl its mystery. Mm. There's very little that took me by surprise. I think the second half where it almost tries to sort of get a bit uh, architect matrix scene on me and tries to introduce some like physical, we need to get the person here to there or even sort of a, a final fight towards the end. Mm. I didn't really care that much for. Ultimately, I left the, the film the feeling, yeah, I'm not gonna remember it. It's a little bit, uh, underbaked mm. the there's like a sort of strange epilogue which i didn't really find that entertaining yeah. unfortunately if this I, I wish this had come out as a premise in 2015 yeah and i think we'd be looking at this being like wow what a yeah. cool original idea unfortunately i've seen get out i've seen us mm. um which just seemed to tackle that in a much well, more interesting way when we were setting up i mentioned to you because you're briefly describing it i said have you seen sorry to bother you no, which i haven't yeah. which um, came out in 2018, Boots Riley film, which had Lakeith Stanfield in it and Army Hammer and yeah. um, Tessa Thompson. And uh, like, it was very, uh, that They Clone Tyrone sounds very similar to that, which was, Sorry to Bother You was heavily stylized. Yeah. Like more than more so and more weird than a Jordan Peele film. This was, again, Sorry to Bother You was like set in the present day, but everything was worn out and tired, but very sort of like retro, but also mm. kind of futuristic. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Yeah, <laughs> I, and, and they also in that stumbled across a conspiracy to do with race and to do with yeah. um, the relationship, with, you know, um, uh, and, 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 and oppression of, of, of race and like, that, that and, and it was kind of funny, weird, and uncomfortable, and like didn't all work, but like it was really bold and really vivid, and like mm. I'm just that yeah, I, that was that was really interesting. And what you've just described there sounds a bit like a rehash of that. It does really. Yeah. It's a, that's a real shame. Mm. It's mad that a film starring John Boyega and Jamie Fox is coming out in this month, and it's just I, I you and I have said we've not really heard that many people no. talking about, which I think is a shame because it's you know well as we said the film conversation has been swallowed up by Barbenheimer completely yeah so look I, I would be really interested to hear if people do check it out if they've got a spare night where they're not at the cinema this week and they want to watch it you can send in your old thoughts to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com but yeah that was they cloned Tyrone hey guys this episode of Pop Kitchen is brought to you by Caldera Lab now. Skincare is important, but so is making a good first impression. So how do you put your best face forward with a good skincare routine? Caldera Lab is clinically proven to reduce wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging and they're leading the way in men's skincare. Skincare can often feel like the Wild West for men, where the men can't find the right brand or simply lack knowledge or understanding of it. But luckily, it's easier than ever with Caldera Lab and the Regimen. Guys, inside the Regimen is a bundle, including the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. 
The clean slate starts and ends your day. This face wash leaves all skin types refreshed. The base layer is your daily moisturizer that hydrates your skin and absorbs it fast, leaving you with a matte finish so you can start your day confidently. The Good is a clinically proven multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother, as well as helps reduce the visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. Caldera Lab is made with top tier ingredients and is a great addition to your daily routine. It takes less than a minute, morning and night. So you can use our exclusive code PULP20, that's P-U-L-P-2-0, to enjoy 20% off of their best products at calderalab.com. That's calderalab.com. You can find more information in the link in our description below. James, wham, the band. Where do you stand on them? <laughs> You're not, ex not exclaiming in a comic book. <laughs> wham! <laughs> Bam! Thank uh, you, man. I don't, I don't really. I uh, enjoy uh, their work at Christmas, but I don't listen to it. I, how many, how many Wham songs could you name? I think you're underwhammed, actually. I think yeah, most people would be more whammed than you Probably are. Probably not more than one. Name, you, don't, you don't know any other... You, 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 come on, you know more than one. What, so you only know Last Christmas? Yeah, like I can't... Like, yes, you can. You, you, you tell me you can't name two more Wham songs. I really like... I don't listen to Wham. Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. Club Tropicana. So. Yeah, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have got that. Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, you could push me for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm your man. I think there's Wham songs that you, if you heard it, you Yeah, go, yeah, of course, oh, of yeah. course. But like, I'm not engaged with Wham. Bam. Huge Bam. amount of respect for, for, for the, the hair and everything. Okay, But I'm fine. just not like- That is fine. It's a no. That's fine. So when we went to see, uh, a couple of months ago, we went to Netflix mm. to see what's next event. And they, we did our episode about it. And they talked about their slate. Yeah. And they have a series of documentaries coming out. A lot of them about musical celebrities, and one of them was a documentary about Wham. And it's finally come out, yeah. and I'm a few weeks late to it, but I wanted to watch it for a couple of reasons. First of all, 90 minutes long, nice and easy. Gorgeous. That train bar ride back from Edinburgh wasn't going to kill itself. Yeah. You know, I was like, perfect, <laughs> yeah. 90 minutes. Um, uh, I, like most people, love a good bit of 80s nostalgia. Even mm. a time period I did not live in, but a time period that is colorful and poppy, and in a way, Wham exemplified very well visually contrasted from our generation exactly i also love music i mm. i know like for i don't have a close affinity to wham mm. but i like uh, and respect them as pop as a pop band they have delivered yeah. you know a handful of really solid pop hits um and we all know that george michael was very talented and sadly sadly no longer with us so anyway i whacked it on and i wanted to talk about it on the show uh because i think there's a couple of things in there that make it kind of worthwhile so just what, what I will say is it's directed in the same style as kind of like an Asif Kapadia, Senna, Amy documentary. Nice. That there are, it's all archive footage and animations. I don't mean like cartoon. I mean like, you know, um, uh, uh, archive photos coming in and then zooming out to be a scrapbook that's being underlined by a pen. You know, really yeah. sort of kinetic visual stuff. There is no cut, cut away to either of them sat uh, talking, archive or, or present. Um, it is it is entirely told, voiceover wise, by George Michael and Andrew Ridgely, the two people mm. in in Wham. Actually, a bit like Supersonic. I was just about to say, yeah, in the way you had them. that was just Nolan Liam talking yeah. you through that, and that's what Wham is like. It doesn't really ever sort of bring you back to present. It's like no. them just commenting yeah. on stuff as it was, and it yeah. really just it doesn't waste any time. It just begins straight away, and it's like you know Wham. For those who don't know, was. Uh, 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 the two of them, George Michael and Andrew Ridgely, there's this friendship that began at school and they just share the love of music and they were two very different characters, but they looked after each other. And the friendship at the heart of it is a really key heartwarming thing that you get across in, the, in this documentary. Started band, took off to great success. And what I didn't realize is how young they were when they made success. Wham were like 20. They were just older than a boy band to yeah. have made it. Um, the first thing to say is, is if you love... Uh, not just like 80s nostalgia, but if you love good archive footage of that has been immaculately restored mm, of that period, not just top of the pops and sell out arena tours, but there's a bit where they go to China, for example, and just oh. seeing street scenes of George Michael with a lion's mane of hair. Oh yeah. Walking through just... the streets um, of China. And, and, and when it sort of would go back and yes. then down yeah. from the back. Yeah. And actually George Michael is, a really, is, is really funny at one point where they're talking about when they shot the last Christmas video and there's a bit where the camera like goes around the table and there's all these people sat and, and they were having real booze in their stuff, in the 
cups, right? Yeah, it's so, the eighties, man. Exactly. So he said uh, uh, he just got more and more excessive, and he's like, "I'm just, I'm just surprised you can barely, you can barely see it through all the fucking hair. There's too much hair in the camera; you can barely see my face." Yeah. Um, so that's that's great. That's really enjoyable. The second thing is that George Michael, who I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how well researched and sourced all the archive stuff that George Michael says in this documentary. If you'd said to me that George Michael had sat down and recorded his thoughts years ago before he died, I would have believed you because he's speaking as much as Andrew Ridgely does in this film. Yeah. Um, and they're talking very um, frankly. But um, what's great is that George Michael is uh, just such a funny presence. He's yeah. a really great, not, you know, obviously a talent, but like he's so frank and witty and charming. Yeah. It's really, really nice. You know, and Andrew Ridgely obviously comes across as, as, as very nice as well. And, and it, but he's a different character. He's much more relaxed. Um, if you're looking for a nitty gritty documentary that, you know, delves into George Michael's personal life, this isn't it. This isn't about George Michael. It is about Wham and it goes to the end of Wham. It touches on George's sort of burgeoning identity, burgeoning sexuality in a sort of light and appropriate way. But the film has the wham treatment, which is light, fun, and but good enough to hold your attention. You know, not, not disposable or kind of sickly sweet. Unless you don't like wham, in which case, why watch it? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the third thing that makes it really nice is that, oh, sorry, just on George Michael, because they have so much footage and photos of him when he was younger, I think he had like one of the biggest glow ups I think I've ever seen. Really? Oh, wow. Photos of George Michael when he was like 15. I mean, he's not ugly, but he's but like, bored. He's George mid. Yeah. He is so hairy, bought, you know, basically a monobrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of like, just looks like your average kind of squeaky teen. Like, no, I know. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like, like a squeaky teen. And then this sort of pop stardom yeah, just like happens. molds him into this. The Illuminati sort that out. <laughs> this angel. Certain, yeah. um, It'll come for us. If you sorry, if you also like as we all do, whether it was in Supersonic or Get Back or anything, mm -hmm. if you like creative people talking about how they create things, in this case, oh, how nice. they create songs, it's the, it's a really great thing for that. And how they talk about how they came up with these these songs that you know so familiar from the radio, how they were constructed. But at the heart of it, what is really nice is that it doesn't. It's the story of Wham is that you know George Michael became increasingly big, increasingly talented, and um, it was really part of forming his whole new identity. And Andrew Ridgely was not sidelined, but, you know, he was not progress. He was, he was um, growing at a and developing in a different way to George Michael. Yeah. And most music documentaries and most stories about bands, they would become the third act, which is that person would resent the other person mm. and they would get bitter and they'd have an argument, they'd fall out and they'd never speak again. That doesn't happen. What's nice that comes through in Wham! is the friendship. And basically, Andrew Ridgely realizes slowly that Wham!, which for him is everything, actually for George Michael is the, just the first act of a much bigger story. Mm. He realizes that Wham! for George Michael is a springboard into, the, as he says towards the end, like he's on the cusp of greatness. Yeah. And he's not resentful of that. He's fine with that. He, for him, he's a little bit uncomfortable with fame. He doesn't want to stand in George's way. And because he, they are genuine friends, that it kind of resolves itself in this kind of beautiful way. And George Michael, conversely, is very much thankful to Andrew. And he says, I couldn't have done it without you. And it's just, that's just a nice story. It's not something you hear. It doesn't end in bitterness. You have this kind of complete arc. Um, and I, it, that's just, 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 just really heartwarming to, to watch. Again, you know, great witty anecdotes about how last Christmas was made and, mm. and, um, and band aid. And, and, and I think last Christmas, I'd say like, is in like what I considered the top five Christmas songs next to all I want for Christmas in terms of, yeah, like, it like finally went to number play. one in 2020. It says, um, oh, wow. there's also a nice bit where Elton and anyone who watched Glastonbury, the the because you obviously were there you talked about that recently I was there. yeah and, uh, oh by the way I actually I actually just watched the the, the Elton set yes, and said, said, amazing yeah. unbelievable but obviously in that Elton does a you know a, a shout out to George Michael mm. who was his birthday and, yep. you know, and what's nice is that there's a clip from the Ivan Novell Awards in 1984 85 where. George Michael has won an award for songwriting for Wham and Elton John 35 40 years ago is saying 
He says, I can't understand why people are so horrible to Wham. He says, I've seen people come and go and the, no one gives them credit as actual songwriters and mm. they have uh, so much talent, people put them down, but the people who put them down won't be there tomorrow. And it was just nice from an Elton John point of view to see that he wasn't just saying that stuff on at Glastonbury this year yeah, yeah. because he could. He's been, He's been, been saying it all that. along. Yeah. Um, so that's it. it. It's light, it's breezy, it's fun. If you... If you it, it, if you like that kind of era and you are into it even a, a little bit, it's it's really for you. Ninety minutes, also, and you come away with it, you know, um, it lifted by the warmth and the emotional friendship at the heart of it, and also with a touch of poignancy, realizing that just like it is just really sad that George Michael is no longer with us. Very sad, yeah. and also that George Michael was not only on the cusp of greatness with Wham, but on the cusp of a lot of troubles that would then plague him throughout his whole life, and he talks yeah. about that in the archive footage. Great, good fun. Wham! I've always noticed that George Michael, as a like as a presence in media or on TV, is always received in a really you say the word warmth, like warmly by our yeah. parents' generation. Like whenever he's on TV in a documentary yeah. or in a music video, I'll always like notice my parents and my grandparents be like, "Oh God, yeah, he's young there, isn't he?" Yeah, yeah. I used to have hair like that. Yeah, and I got jeans like that upstairs. I, think it is. I, was, I was a twenty-eight inch yeah. waist. And I know like, oh, it is. They yeah. really sort of connect with hit like that style of music and that moment in time and sort of a new era of pop culture. Yes. I feel like him also being gay and like how everything mm. evolved with that. And obviously I think another way of why Elton John probably links yeah. with him so much, like him like- Took him under his ring. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, you just see so much, like the way in which people react to him, I think mm. is really unique. And that's- And even, I even, yeah. sorry, I think that that's before he died as well. I would yes. that. And then him dying obviously- Yeah. Like, Our that. parent, because Wham, are a set period they they did break up you know they did yeah. conclude very actually amicably um they are locked in time and they actually said that they're like well, you know, we can't do this forever it was all about youth we wanted to be a part of people's youth for that time and that's yeah. why i think yes this documentary which is you know has that little thing on netflix which says number 10 you know it's been mm. in the top 10 for ages has been so warmly received by people because it is that moment um in time and also um it's quite refreshing that George Michael basically said that was their intention. They were like, we, they started doing the thing with like wham rap, where it was almost like slight, slight social commentary. And they were like, no, we want to be fun, exuberant, colorful pop. That was their intention. And a lot of the mainstream music media kind of put them down for it. And George Michael makes this point about wake me up before you go, go. He's like, people don't realize that I, he's like, I wrote it. I, um, I wrote it, I, I performed it and I produced it. Mm. And it's like I don't think anyone, if they knew, knew all that three things, would take would pull that song apart. Yeah, it's fun to make make fun of the kind of you know jitterbug, but it's yeah. like those three things are really bloody hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'd like to see them try, and I think that's really fair. And let's not ever forget that uh, George Michael was the first person that James Corner wanted to do carpool karaoke with. Mariah Carey was the first person who did it on the Late Late Show, yeah. but originally it was a comic relief. Yeah, bit that's that right. It's a really in, good in comic relief sketch Gavin where and Stacey character. he drives. He drives Smithy to this round table that yeah. and all these celebrities are there. Yeah, and we this uh, my family still quotes po quote part of that sketch. Yeah, because yeah. George Michael was in the car mm. and having a little. You know, it's so funny. Yeah, because George Michael was genuinely very funny. Yes, he plays it really well. And he's like, is a and he gets a grumpy. He gets all grumpy, yeah. and, and Smithy's like, don't put your sad face on. Yeah. Come on, and he puts it's Wham really on in the car. Yeah. Um, yeah, greatly missed. Anyway, that was Wham. Have you seen Wham? Have you seen it? <laughs> If so, write, the camera. Yeah. Seen it. Uh, write into hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. Okay, guys, we've reached that point of the show where we read out your emails. Mm. Robert has written in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com, just like you can. Do you see how the way I flipped that? Love you normally say it? Yeah, yeah. Robert has written in about Indiana Jones and says, hey, not seen the new movie yet, but I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan Me and too. Harrison Ford fan. Uh, in brackets, check out Shrinking on Apple TV. Excellent, so yeah, funny. Yeah, it's the second or yeah. third time someone's mentioned that. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I can't say it like screams urgency. To no, me. no. <laughs> that, that is so <laughs> specific and accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, listening to your review of it and thinking about the past films, I agree. Why not pass the bat on to a great up and coming actor and mm -hmm. make it kind of like Last Crusade? film make Indy Harrison Ford be like his dad Sean Connery who could have took him along for the adventure play on that he's older and grumpier like his dad P.S. my favorite bit of the show is the impressions of oh, the impressions you both do cracks me up and what I like to do with my friends uh, and is like what I like to do with my friends questionably not as good that's very kind Robert like, thank you in another universe the whole you know how Shia LaBeouf was his kid yeah 
like yeah, that could have been a, a way to yeah. have it grow and go on. It's still, you know how Indiana Jones isn't really Indiana Jones's name. The Indiana's the dog name, which is Steven Spielberg's dog's name. Is that in the films? I've forgotten it's in the that. Third one. Oh, I have. I have seen that. In so, a long say, time. It's Henry Jones Jr. I remember in the third one, as a Steven kid, Spielberg's dog is called. Yeah, really freaks out when the person drinks from the wrong grail. Mm, Do you remember that? These ages. Yeah, oh, you chose. Poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I like three. I, I like all the original three. Can't comment. Uh, yes, Robert, thanks for your opinion on Indiana, Indiana Jones. What is wrong with me? Why can't I speak? Mm. The more I um, the more I think on, I dwell, I ponder mm. on Indy 5, having seen it. And there's sort of this bit, there's either there's two camps of people who go, God, that was really bad, who I've spoken to have seen it. And there's some people who go, Yeah, but you know, I actually enjoyed watching yeah. it and all, along the way. And unfortunately, the more I think about it, the more the ending sticks in my head when someone's like, What do you think? That's the images of like the end, which I really don't like, right. and how it's actually not a great end to Indy, really are prominent. And like the fun swashbuckling adventure really does kind of like fall to the back. Okay. So I lean more on a disappointing disappointing end this next one is from douglas who writes into the show and says hello james george and fellow sirens it's been nice, nice. to hear the nickname start catching on since my previous email with the suggestion so this was douglas, who oh, douglas okay thank you I be been i'm sorry i doubted it for a bit douglas i know i said that i doubted it i i've i sometimes have my doubts but <laughs> i doubted it it was doubt i have my yeah. doubts <laughs> my move my favorite movie is doubt <laughs> i've been a little behind on the episodes as I try keeping them until I've watched them, <laughs> until I've watched the latest movie release. That makes sense. Yeah. Know, like, yeah. Uh, or at least skipping the segment until I've seen the film itself. I took my dad to see the new Indiana Jones last week as a wee treat, and we both had a really great time. I see where James is coming from, from with the third act, and was surprised they doubled down. Well, well, the, 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 no, no, it's not, it's it's not, not spoiler. a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. I see where James is coming from, from the third act, and was surprised they doubled down after the interdimensional beings of the previous film. Right. But thought generally it was an enjoyable two and a bit hours that might, might well end the saga this time. I, I hope so. <laughs> um, my dad was laughing more than I was at some scenes, though he pulled a face at Indy's retirement party as he was just about to finish up work himself. That's an early moment in oh, right. the university. He's like given a retirement party because he's 83. <laughs> Even for that, he should have retired. Is he 83 in the movie? No, but like... How old know. is he meant to be in the movie? Probably, it was the... 45. 60. <laughs> <laughs> so it was 69, so... I think 70s. I reckon they've given him they're giving him 10 years off. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, it was also fun to see Glasgow on the big screen again. The city was... Uh, and Oh, sorry. So Douglas has attached pictures... Of like him, uh, sort of like from his view behind a camera. Of I'll read. Yeah, but he's he's given us materials. Yes. Uh, the city was used for the parade scene and some external shots outside the bar slash university with Phoebe Waller Bridges' character and the agents. I work in the media and was filming the filming, oh, the so knew media. exactly what scene to watch out for. Boyd Holbrook on a motorbike chasing the very obvious Harrison Ford stunt double on a horse up St <laughs> Vincent Street. Attached are some pictures, including the production crew thinking they were clever standing in front of my camera. Yes, he's got a very sort of like media um, camcorder style camera, and there's some people in high vis, and it's that parade with all of the the bits. It's not only the film you have discussed recently that was partially shot in Glasgow. Ben Affleck's bat bike chase in the flash opening act took place a few streets away oh, around nice. George Square with the new Queen Street train station very visible in one shot. I enjoyed that bat fleck yes. flash chase sequence in the beginning. And that, it makes sense. It seems like that entire movie yeah. was filmed was, I was, <laughs> was filmed in the UK. I was rubbing my hands together be like, oh, get a bit of Batman. Yeah, I know. In the beginning. Um, but the less said about that film, the better. So not a Flash fan. Yeah. By the way, we are I, one yeah. of the few people on the internet who tolerated and actually enjoyed the Flash. When we posted our review of it on like socials, we yeah. got a couple of comments saying, yeah, I agree, but a I lot of the sentiment is like people and someone else being like, what? <laughs> I think it's low hanging fruit to hate that film. I think, so I, I, think, I think you and I looked past that and actually saw something that we can actually enjoy. We so. wouldn't see it again. You said at the time you would. Do you know what? Now I don't think I would. I think about yeah, like, I, I uh, don't think, uh, Michael I, I, Shannon's rubbery face and I go, I don't really. Yeah. I don't. I, I, you and I had a great time in the best possible yes, environment. best possible environment. We don't need to necessarily I'm not return. going back on it. I no, had a no, good no, time. No, no, no. Absolutely. I'm conscious that not a lot of people uh, enjoyed it. I would encourage viewers and listeners to read the original Flashpoint comic with some explanation for what's happening. Proper use of existing DC characters, which would have made for a better cameos with the actors involved. An actual villain and no pasta. A movie doesn't have to have a villain. 
And I know what you're sure. about to say. Yes. I know you're about to say it's a comic book movie. Yeah, yeah. But I quite like the fact that the, 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 it was an anta- the antagonist was time. Yes, an antagonist is not always a villain, yes. per se. Yes. Um, also, I hope George enjoyed his trip to Edinburgh. We'd love to hear about it as much as James's holidays. I know. I hope he caught some of the locations <laughs> used in big movies there. But if not, there's always next time. Sirens on our end. Douglas. And then he has a PS. Because it's been a while since my last email, I thought I would try and ask a brand new question you haven't had the chance to tackle yet. We all know you both love your trilogies, George with the Before Films and yes. James the Lord of the Rings. If you had to recast one of the key roles from your trilogy and replace them with any actor from any era, which character are you recasting and with whom? Don't worry if you have to wait until coming up with answers randomly on the tube one day and answering it in a few episodes time. I think there's a dangerous assumption that you mm. could replace Ethan Hawke with Timothy Chalamet in, the f- in Before Sunrise. But yeah. I worry that pushes Jesse oh. too far into, you know, yeah, art, different, art different student. energies to me. And also, I don't want to see Timothy Chalamet's energy in take, Before Sunset. No, is that no. what the kids, is that what the <laughs> no, Red, I, Reddit slash Before I, I trilogy think, I think people there's, are there's, On the Venn diagram of those two, that character and that actor, there's yeah. a strong overlap and I don't want to have that. I think the cast of Lord of the Rings are great. Yeah, I, I have it, very few complaints. I don't think there's a weak link in there. And I'm not trying to, sorry, I wasn't trying to say that Ethan Hawke was a weak link, but no, I was just engaging no, with the like, question. If you were to. Yeah, I'm going I'm to shut you, I'm going to do a Tarantino and I'm going to shut your butt down. <laughs> and I'm shutting your question down. But thank you so much, Douglas. That's um, a great email. About Edinburgh. Yes, of course. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, well, I've been to Edinburgh many times. Uh, we've we've, 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 we've on forged place. walking yeah. down Victoria Street talking about the ending of the prestige, yeah. carrying yeah. bits of props for a foot. We for even stage in show. Edinburgh talked about the idea of what if one day we did a film podcast together. I'm just thinking, man. Like, we could do it. I don't believe. If we could believe, we could just jump through a time portal and just slap each other in the face. (laughs) Don't do it. (laughs) Um, Also, uh, not much to say about Edinburgh. Mm. Other, because I've been so many times. What I did do the first time that I didn't do before is I went up to Carlton Hill. Have you ever been up to Carlton Hill? Yes. Edinburgh. Yes. Panorama of the whole thing. I went at sunset. Beautiful. 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 The bay. I did some filming. That building that looks like like a turd. uh, It looks like a. like a Greek temple bit. Oh, the, the yeah. Edinburgh's pillars. What's it called? I, mean, it's got the, I don't know. It's the, the monument that was abandoned. Edinburgh's yes. pride and yeah. failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did some shooting up there in like 2021. It was beautiful. Yeah. So, so beautiful. So anyway, thank you, Douglas, for that email. This next email is from Marcus who says, James and George, not hello, James and George, says, James and George... Hello from Kansas City. Nice. I've just discovered the part of the past few months through TikTok and I have absolutely been absolutely loving it. Marcus, welcome. A quick aside, as I've been making my way through your back catalog, mm-hmm. catalog spelled, I think, in the American way where they drop the UE yeah. in the way that they also do that with program with only one M. We're ready for a French person to be like, catalog. <laughs> As I've been making my way through your back catalogue, I wanted to jump in on the question from a while back about your favourite phrases from movies that have made their way into the zeitgeist. Oh, yeah. My two va- favourites in this vein are, one, the phrase Debbie Downer, which was created for the Debbie Downer SNL sketch in 2004 no. and didn't even exist before that. Really? That's really cool if that's Surely. true. All right. You Quick think Google. Debbie Downer's only been around? I also thought Debbie Downer was a very like, Aussie thing to say. Like, Debbie, Debbie Downer. Debbie's such a Debbie Downer. Debbie Downer is a... Is that really like an SNL sketch that's permeated through? That, that's rare for an SNL yeah. sketch <laughs> yeah. nowadays to do Debbie that. Debbie Downer etymology? Yeah, I'm just... Origin? <laughs> I want the origin story. Does it have its own Wikipedia page? Evolving from the character's popularity, the name Debbie Downer eventually became an established slang phrase referring to a pessimistic person who frequently adds bad news and negative <laughs> feelings to a gathering. It is true. That is amazing. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And... Um, the second one was the phrase bucket list wasn't commonly known or used before the 2007, 2007. 2008, I think, Jack, Jack Nicholson, Morgan Freeman vehicle of the same name. I agree that, so bucket list was, was obviously a thing because they based a movie around yeah. it. They didn't, they didn't invent the phrase bucket list, but I- Popularized by def, I mean, most people, if they said to me, where did you learn the phrase bucket list? I would have said the movie. Oh, I just would have said it's one of those things that just gets around. You, but surely it was from the movie you learned that. No, no, I, w- I, would, I would have just gone. I my remember first when the bucket would be. I, one don't, of those, I don't know. It's one of those things. I don't think the bucket list was, especially in the UK, was a big phrase at all. And when it came out, people no, were like, yeah, what the bu- what, "What's a bucket? What's a bucket <laughs> list? It's when you kick the bucket." Oh, I get it. Um, have you seen that movie? No, uh, I saw it. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Sorry, it's a really bad bit. 
really rubbish. I mean, God, I've seen this like 15 years ago. Yeah. I just remember there's a really lackluster rubbish scene where they go racing, like 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 uh, NASCAR racing. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, like, I would okay. rather see a different film with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson. Yeah, think of all the great things. <laughs> think of all could they could have do. done. Um, Marcus then goes on to say, I'm writing in about Asteroid City. Mm -hmm. James, the first time my, fir my three best friends and I saw the film, we felt exactly the same way as you did. Empty, fluffy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. However, through a series of, of events, we all went and saw it for a second time. I wonder okay. what those events could be. Uh, which we've... <laughs> oh, I wonder what they could be to have made someone go a second time. And George, you, you said many times, the true test of a film is... Is, is the second, second viewing. viewing, absolutely. Saw it for a second time and all four of us walked out having, in italics, loved it. Right. While it's not Wes Anderson's very finest work, I found myself walking back, most, wake, walking back from most of my original critiques and I found it moving, wildly creative and myself much more genuinely attached to the characters. Mm. So I'm curious for you boys, are there any films you disliked on first viewing only to really enjoy the second time? Keep up the great pods, keep up the great pods, keep sending my love from the very middle of the US. Marcus, Marcus, very short answer for you, which most people know if they've been listening a long time, which is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Didn't get it the first time, really yes. enjoyed it the second time. Just on the uh, Wes Anderson thing, you know, I t totally believe you and I, I you know, I think that's great. That like more the more I speak to people, the more it is people say a distance from the characters, mm. a lack of connection to who they're seeing on screen, and it's like this. I told you, it's like a frame within a frame. Yeah. So you are like inherently at a very very far away from yeah. what's going on, and because it is so out there, and no one's really displaying any yeah. emotion, maybe for like two thirds of the film until the end, it just catches up with you, and you're not there. I believe you. I don't think I'm going to rewatch it though. Got it. Thank you, Marcus. This next one's from Ross, who says, how you getting on, boy? Tradi brackets, traditional Norfolk greeting for you. And, and yet you said but that like you're he, from Texas. He spells it how, normal, Y-A, yeah, getting, apostrophe, arn, boy. I see. How are you getting arn, boy? That's Irish. That's Irish. How are you getting on, boy? How are you getting arn, boy? What is arn? Norfolk? Norfolk. Norfolk. No, I know what, sorry, I know what Norfolk is. <laughs> I mean, like, what is a Norfolk, Norfolk accent? How are you getting arn, boy? That's Irish. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. Norfolk. Mm. I'm once again writing to you guys, my favorite podcasters. Firstly, I want to weigh in with a suggestion for what to call us, your fans, and I hope I'm not too late. Pulp makes me think of oranges, and what's on an orange? Pith. Therefore, what? my shout is for pith heads. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds like piss heads with a lift. Thank you for that. Thank you. Putting it over here. <laughs> right in the bin. <laughs> Thanks for that. What a pith of pith. Ross, you're a friend of the show. You've written it yeah. many times. Pith we welcome heads. the suggestion. Denied. <laughs> It just sounds like we're calling them piss heads. Yeah. And what a bunch pissed. of piss heads. Oh, piss There's off. Of piss heads. <laughs> anyway, I recently went to Florida with my family and was looking forward to what films I might get round to watching on the flight so I could report back on potential good plane films. Well, that was a fool's errand. My kids are four and two, <laughs> and turns out they weren't prepared to sit nicely and watch films for eight and a half hours each way. I also made an awful choice of film when I chose Tenet. Whoa. It took me seven hours to watch. <laughs> I must have paused it 80 times to deal with something. And whilst I enjoyed Nolan's presentation, I just couldn't understand characters' intentions of how to make the inversions work in their favor baffled me honestly <laughs> was this the film's fault or my disjointed viewing then on the way home i managed to watch an hour of amsterdam which was something i was enjoying and now can't find to stream anywhere so oh. all in all in all caps a disaster <laughs> and a grave cautionary tale to film loving parents of small kids going on long haul flights just before we go on i mean couldn't brilliant. have picked not just like a worse film yeah. to watch on a plane visually but conceptually and plot wise but what I so, find really funny is that when he was like, I find it really hard to connect to the characters and know what's going on and how the inversions work. Even if even you had in real it, time, yeah, without the for pause, once, the disruptions wouldn't have made a difference. Even if I was in the cinema and I got to pause it to be like, okay, so they're going back. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're going forward. I wouldn't have been able to follow it. Yeah. Uh, it would take me days to watch it if I had to. In the words of Quentin Tarantino when he was asked what he thought of Tenet, he went, you know, I think I need to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need to see it again. Um, yeah, I mean... You got to pick. You got to pick differently. We're always good to point out good yeah. plane films when they're there. Yeah. So hopefully the the not too short, not too long, not too engaging, not yeah. too boring. Yeah, you kind of want that kind of mid. That's I would never have chosen. No, Tenet. Never. Maybe Amsterdam, Amsterdam yeah. on the verge. Like you can dip in and that, out of it. Yeah, because if, and if, its wishy washiness almost lends itself to the start stop. Yeah, I mean like food. it's like no, it's so inconsequential. Amsterdam, you're yeah. not going to miss anything if the air steward comes by and asks if you want your food. 
I have to put it away for a bit. Also, yeah. I thought that was on Disney Plus. You're asking where to find it on streaming. You know, funnily enough, there was something just on They Clone Tyrone, very David O. Russell about sort of the hair and the thing. Mm, you know, those elevator of shots of like three people like waiting for something. Yeah. Look it how wiggy a, we are. Yeah, Look at our a, costumes. A David O. Russell feel to it. Now I think about it. Uh, Ross goes on to say, finally, a question. I put on the animated Robin Hood from 1973 oh, right. for my lads and sat down to watch it with them as this was on rotation for my brother. And I, growing up with Hercules, Aladdin, Flubber, I I could not stop laughing at Prince John. And I was wondering, who is the funniest film villain you could think of? Mm. Others off the top of my head are Yzma in The Emperor's New Groove. So good. Uh, Ray Fiennes in In Bruges yeah. and uh, Shooter McGavin in Happy Gilmore. Right. You can have bonus points if the film is not particularly a comedy. Best regards as always. And mind how you go, a Norfolk farewell. Ross, sent from my Motorola Razor. I nice. highly doubt it. I highly, <laughs> that would take you so long to type on a Motorola Razor. Um, great question. And I hope I do get bonus points because there is one of the funniest villains ever and not in a comedy is, of course, Eddie Redmayne in Jupiter Ascending. Oh, yeah, I've not seen it, but we... <gasps> just unhinged. I create life! <laughs> do you think he turned off on set and directors were just like, we can't, I, I can't tell him he's really gone for it. I think it, I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie Redmayne turned around and was like, I was given no direction <laughs> and I read the script and I thought we were doing this kind of movie. I didn't realize <laughs> that, that Sean Bean was a playing a dog. <laughs> yeah. That screams we didn't have a meeting before we yeah. turned up to yeah. shoot. <laughs> um, and sometimes to cheer myself up, I will go and watch clips of it. Just think this is so out of, this is so misplaced, yeah. so misjudged in a year when you won an Oscar. I wonder if that's fun to watch with a few beers. Well, I have a friend who loves big ambitious uh sci-fis that go absolutely nowhere and form their place so he, he yeah. really liked jupiter ascending he really yeah. liked valerian and the city of oh, a thousand God, planets yeah <laughs> which i remember at the time it was like jean luc um it's uh, uh, Bre no, it, no it's luke besson jean luc besson no, no no it's just luc besson <laughs> jean luc goddard <laughs> luc besson everyone was saying like oh my god like luc besson's return after the after pioneering fifth element. fifth element and i was like okay like fifth element I, was okay i was good but i'm not gonna be like where the hell's where the hell's luke mess on yeah. and then it was that and yeah no not at all um, um i have told you before about on the show about yzma and the emperor's new group yes. and the cat and yeah and uh he's the one putty from uh yeah yeah he's so funny it's good 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 poison yeah, yeah, yeah. Kuzco, Kuzco is poison poison <laughs> for <Kuzco. laughs> is there any other villains you can think of that are funny <laughs> Villains that are funny. Uh, there's the Andrew Scott was very good in Sherlock as Moriarty. Yeah, there, he does his classic thing, which kind of Andrew Scott does a lot now, which is he kind of like turns his head and it's the that voice Irish Paul Dano. Of, yeah, it is. It is an Irish. <laughs> the voice kind of goes and it comes back down. He's got quite a, a quite soft cute, Irish cute. accent. I think he does. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> we're going to lose our entire continent. Um, continent? What's wrong with me? <laughs> I feel like we're country really today. Ray finds as Voldemort has some weird bits where he, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he does. That's how you laugh when you don't He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> It really takes your eye off. That is all the emails we have time for this week. Thank you very much for writing them in and continue to do so. I'm sorry if we haven't read out your email yet. We will try and get round to it. We do get a lot now, so we have to sift through all the papers. We sit here, we print them all out. No, we don't. But we imagine if we did, if that's how much sifting we have to do. But we will get round to it. I dream of having like a, uh, An empty a plucky, box. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like a plucky researcher who creates like a, mm. an episode pack. Oh, and it's yes. like my section, your section. Oh info highlight even though i haven't seen the wham documentary it's like mm. all everyone who created it with faces next a to production the production members yeah and then yeah. it's like all the questions like who reads it would you have them in the booth behind the glass over yeah. there it's like, Cause you know, I, cause like it, george can you do that take once more please yeah. Smo always smoking for some reason Okay, Glenn Candango. Yeah, 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 literally. Because yeah, literally. <laughs> like, I, I, as a runner, I would print out like scripts and call yeah. sheets and running orders and like you'd have them so everyone would grab them. And I fantasize about having our own. Yeah. With just every, and then like the games, but like only if it's I'm doing the games, your pack doesn't have the games. Yes. And it's just well thought, I don't know, one day. One day. One day. Speaking of games, All right. Pop Kitchen ends with a game. George, are you ready? We're going to be doing the grand return of film movie opposites. The best and dumbest game. Yeah. Also, we're going to be doing some misks, some miscellaneouses. I think you, 
Did, shouldn't you say miscellaneous? miscellaneous. Oh, you've been funny. It's like sort of. We're, we've got a weird it's energy today. I think, I think. I think. I think it's because it's warm, and I've been in the office today. And I'm always shorts. different when I've been in the office. And maybe you've yeah. been. Have you been at home on your own all day? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's what it <laughs> all is. All day. I've been in this room, <laughs> just waiting. No. George. Okay. George. We're gonna start with some miscellaneous. Um, George. George is a great name. George is a great name. It's a king's name. Thank you. And G, G is a great letter. Yeah. One of the hardest letters to learn to draw when you're a kid. You gotta go round, up, down, there. Did you struggle at school? George, <laughs> <laughs> we all got there in the end. George, you have to name 10 films beginning with the letter G. Your time starts- uh, Wait, are you counting thes? Are thes allowed? No thes allowed. Oh God, okay. Your time starts now. Godzilla 97, Godzilla 2014, uh, it's Kong. Um, okay. Um, uh, g- uh, Nomeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, gr- g- 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 you're not allowed the, right? Um, so I can't say Godfather. Uh, Goodfellas. Yep. Um, g- Two. Green Mile. One. Another Green Mile. Green Room. Green Room. Five. I'll give you five. How many did you want? Ten. 10. Hey. Because if you take out the, that's quite hard. Yeah, you could have done more Godzillas. That was, I thought you were going to How many more Godzillas are there? Godzilla versus Kong. No, it's Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, it's good. No, I think it's Godzilla versus Kong. Guess out. Ghostbusters 1, 2, 2016, Afterlife. Gladiator. Gone with the Wind. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Yes, yes, again, James. If you have no time limit. I gave you a lead in. I was like, the G, the George. Uh, Anyway, ready? George, next game. This is another miscellaneous. Get my timer out. George, you have to name 10 time travel films. You have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, Back to the Future 3. Back to the Future 2 goes in... Uh, no, sorry, that's right. Yeah, sorry. You're Go wasting on. my time. No. Um, uh, uh, predestination, Looper, Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Terminator 3, Terminator... Uh, Salvation doesn't have time travel. No, Terminator 5, Terminator Dark Fate. There you go, it's 10, but I'll also five give you... Uh, yes, it is. Uh, 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 I'll, give you, I'll give you one more. Uh, one more time travel film. In that case, you'll probably want something like Primer. Lovely. I- indie film. I was thinking four. Source Code. Yes, that's not time travel. Yeah, that's not time travel. No, yeah, that's it no, it's not. That is looping. No, it's not. It's, it's memory. It, it's not memory, is it? No, it's it's his, his own brain has like an afterglow that he goes back. It's time travel. No, 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 because he's not sh- he's not the character. He gets supplanted into the character's brain. But he goes back in time many times. Has the has the event already happened then? I don't think it's back. It's Edge of Tomorrow would have been better. Edge of Tomorrow. Right. Yes. They're doing another one apparently. Definitely yeah, doing it. Uh, sure. Believe when I see it. That's hard. I, I, I'm sorry. I, that was a bit of a cop out doing all the different. No, no. I think that's fine. I could do it again for you, maybe. But I'm not. No, going no. To. I liked that. That was good. No, no. I will do it because I'll travel back in time. We'll do it all again. <laughs> oh, I'll know if you travel back in time. Ready, George? You have to name five film characters called John. You have thirty seconds. Your time starts now. Uh, John Carter. Yes. John, uh, King John from Robin Hood. Yeah, I'll give you that. Uh, John, uh, Jonathan, will you accept Jonathan? Yeah. The brother in The Mummy. <laughs> yes. uh, John, Johnny English. Yes. And uh, Johnny Bravo. No, Johnny, Johnny, Jake, Johnny, John, John, Johnny, John. <laughs> Damn it. John Wick. Oh, Johnny Utah. Fudge. John McLean. I yeah. thought you'd get that. All right. John Connor. I only had 30 seconds. <laughs> you did very well. Ready? No, it's more. Last miscellaneous. Okay, go Okay. On. In 30 seconds, you have to name four boxing films that are not Rocky or Creed films. Okay. You have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Raging Bull. Yes. Grudge Match with, sure. with Stallone and, and De Niro. Boxing films. Cinderella Man. Yes. And R. Lee with Will Smith. Yes. I also could have got a million dollar baby. Yes. Is in there. Yeah. Um, the fighter. Hey, you asked for four, I gave you four. <laughs> no, you, lo- you don't want to hear uh, ever about anything. I did my job. <laughs> Put it in the comments if you have some more. You're like okay? a contract. You're like, no, no. Yeah. The, the request was this. I clocked out. I did my time. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for film opposites? If you don't know how to play this game, I have written 
opposite film titles, right? You definitely sure we haven't done some of these before as well. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Either way, it's fine. So, for example, the film down would be up. Yeah. And then the nightmare before Christmas would be the like the the dream, dream after, after, after Easter. Easter. Yeah. yeah. And some of them aren't direct opposites, but, but that's you part get the, of gist. the fun. Okay. Ready? George, you have to guess the film from its opposite film title. Ready? Smart and Smarter. Dumb and Dumber. Before Rain. After Sun. Yes. Brunette. Blonde. Thousand Pound Adult. A Million Dollar Baby. Us Will Shrink Young. We shall grow old. Duh. They shall not grow old. Oh, they shall not grow old. Last Woman. First Man. The Lady of the Bracelets. The Man of... The man of the... The lady of the bracelets. The man of the... Uh, the Lord of the Rings. Damn it. Dependence Night. It should be lady... Uh, da, what? Dependence Night. Independence Day. Yes. <laughs> East Middle Documentary. West... Side Story. <laughs> yes. God. Always Say Always Once. Never Say Never Again. None Noisy on the Eastern Back. <laughs> All quiet on the on the Western Front. That's so stupid. I love it. I liked East Middle documentary. Yes, that was stupid. And well, I, I'm annoyed at how I genuinely engage with them. Yeah, I yeah. genuinely try and take and them seriously. And you have to use like a new part of your brain. Yes, because it's almost like you're you're given this false sense in the early ones to be very literal. Yes, and then you ha- and then it's sort of like actually, oh god, everything you know about words is is wrong. Okay, hit me. Ready? Again. Round two. Last round of the film opposites. George, you have to guess. You have to guess the film from its opposite film title. Ready? White Eve. Black. Adam. Yes. Ah. Venus defends. Mars attacks. Big Mr. Rain. Little Miss Sunshine. Lady of the Walks. Man of the. Sit? Lord of the Flies. God. Damn it. Of the, of the walk. Flies. Walk and fly. Fly and walk. Ugh. Yep. University of R&B. School of Rock. Yes. <laughs> Karate Koala. Kung Fu Panda. Vegetable Pasta. Fruit. Fruit. Opposite of pasta. What? Licorice what? pizza. Fruit. <laughs> there is no opposite of pasta. <laughs> licorice is the opposite of fruit. Wood garlic. Wood, metal, metal, metal? Glass onion. Ugh. Square of happiness. Circle of, square of happiness, you say. Circle of sadness. Circle of... Triangle of sadness. Ugh. There's nothing about Mark. There's something about Mary. Loretta of Americana. Loretta of Americana. Lo- Loretta, Larry. Larry. <laughs> so close. Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> yeah. But there we are. <laughs> Guys, those were the games. I hope you enjoyed it. George is going to cool off and fan himself. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Point Kitchen. Join us next week for Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer. And check out our bonus episode this week, which is all about the strikes that are happening. Mm-hmm. It's going to really affect what's coming up in our release schedule in the coming, not our release schedule, but the release <laughs> schedule of the oh, yeah. Pulp Kitchen's affected by the thing. <laughs> George, yeah. I'm off. Um, and it's, it'd be very interesting to listen to. So check that's that out. That's coming out later this week. That'll be very interesting to listen to. And as ever, guys, please continue to like, subscribe, share, comment, Give us a thumbs up. Give us a review. We really appreciate it. No, I, I, we post new episodes every Wednesday. Yes. I didn't get a chance to do it, but like we'll we do post new episodes every it's Wednesday. Like a, this is like an episode of Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> the <kid who> comes through. <laughs> Kenneth Branagh just comes in holding a gun with a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Thank See you very you. much. See you next week. Next week.